Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this fully 3D printed under desk storage shelf using just Fusion 360. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so here is a quick overview of the product we are going to be making in today's video. And essentially what we are gonna make is this under desk sliding storage where you can store other utilities, your phone, and mainly essentials for your desk. Additionally, we'll also be covering how to add this moving and sliding animation or the sliding effect uh, within Fusion so that way you can kind of give it some more realism as to how this product works. Additionally, if you need a resource on how to make this with step-by-step -step instructions for uh, how to make this design, there will be a link down below in the description. Just in case, if you want to make sure you get everything right from start to finish, there will be a link down below so you can follow those instructions. Additionally, if you just want the STL files as well and you don't want to actually make this yourself, there will be a link down below for that as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with this design. Okay, so here we are with a blank new canvas with Infusion 360. The first thing we need to do is go to create new component and we're gonna name this our under desk storage box. Press okay. Next, click on create new component. We are gonna name this drawer. Let's toggle back our original one. Go to create new component and let's name this holder. So from here, you should have three main components. You should have the under desk storage box, and then you should have these, the drawer component and the holder component underneath this main component here. So if you were to untoggle this, you will see that both of these will toggle off because these are being hosted by this main component here. So from here, what we're going to do now is create our sketch for our design. I'm going to select create sketch, then select the front plane here then reorient our plane so we can see this at a very um, at a front view for our design. Now we're going to go to create rectangle and you're going to want to select center rectangle. From here, select the origin and then drag this out and just select anywhere on the design. Now, what we're going to do now is that we're going to set up some constraints or some dimensions for this design. So I'm going to press D on my keyboard, select the very top line and then type in 100 for our uh, width here. For our height, I'm gonna select this outer line here and I'm gonna set this to 40 millimeters. From here, what we need to do is create an offset. So press O on your keyboard, drag this in, and let's drag this into about negative, say negative point, negative four. Just negative four millimeters. Then press enter. Now what we're going to do here is that we're going to go to the very bottom left of our design here and just draw a random line anywhere on that section here. Now it doesn't matter yet, so since we're actually going to set some dimensions, but just make sure to drag this line down so you can have a 90 degree angle between here and here. Now press D on your keyboard, select this line, select this outer line here, enter that, and let's type in 15 millimeters. Let's repeat the exact same process for the other side. Press L on your keyboard, drag this down, select these two lines here, 15, press OK. Now you should have a sketch with these dimensions. So go ahead and set up these dimensions if you haven't done so already. Now the next step in this process is to create a body from the sketches that we just made. In order to do that, what I'm going to do here is reorient our plane here, press E on our keyboard and select this outer outline of this sketch that we just made here. And then drag this out, let's just say to about 160 millimeters. Now you should have a body that looks like this. It basically looks like a box with an opening right in the middle. The next thing we need to do is to create some sort of stopping point for our drawer on the inside. Meaning that, for example, when we slide the drawer inside, that if we were to push it inside, it would not actually come out the other way. So we need to create some sort of stopper for that. So from here, I'm gonna select the back on our plane here, create sketch, select this back face here, and then press okay. From here, select two point rectangle, select this very edge here where you kind of get that, um, where it kind of magnetically draws into here, drag this out to the other side. Now it doesn't matter the, uh, the distance that you can see here. So let's just say there, 
from here. We could also set this to uh, to some dimension here. We could, but honestly, it's not really that necessary. So I'm gonna just drag this up just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. What matters the most here is when we press E, drag this in, and just don't add too much thickness to this. So I would say maybe about negative three millimeters. Then press OK. Now, if we have our drawer and we push it in, this little compartment here is what's going to stop it from going through our drawer design. The next thing we need to do here is to create the design for the drawer. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my drawer component. Then I'm going to reorient my model to the front view. So do, the, do that if you haven't done so already. Press O on my keyboard. Select this outer face here. Select that. Select the outer line. And let's have a offset of about 0.4 millimeters okay from here what we want to do is we want to create a closed off design for our drawer so press l on our keyboard select this very outer uh, edge here drag this all the way to the right hand side press ok and now we have a fully enclosed sketch which basically allows us to press e on our keyboard select that sketch there go to extent type go to object then I'm going to drag this all the way to the other side or select the face here, which is going to be the two object setting. And then from here, you're going to press OK. Now you have a basically a box, not really a drawer just yet. And in order to make that drawer effect, what we need to do is to create a shell for this. So from here, I'm going to untoggle our holders since we won't be needing that for now. Type in S on your keyboard, type in shell. Select this top face here, and let's shell this to about five millimeters. So from here, when we press OK, now we have a kind of like a small compartment where we can kind of put stuff inside. Now, we pretty much have most of our design finished. If we take a quick look of our design, you can see that we have the box that sits inside, and then we have the drawer, which basically encloses the entire um, holder or the entire drawer itself. The holder encloses the entire holder the holder encloses the entire drawer itself. So from here, what we need to do now is to add some detail. Since we got most of the technical work out of the way, we can go ahead and add some detail to this. So I'm gonna press F on my keyboard, select this line here, select this outer line here, and let's set the fillet to, let's just say 21 millimeters, okay? Let's go ahead and create another fillet for the inside part of this. So press S on our keyboard, type in fillet. Drag this in, and this will be about 15 millimeters. And what I'm really aiming for is for it to have some sort of continuity. So as long as it looks clean and as if they kind of match each other, although it's not perfect, we could play around with these numbers just a bit. But personally, I think this looks just fine. So actually, let me go ahead and add something else here. So if we go back to our fillet that we just made for this, I'm going to go ahead and select Command. And what this allows us to do is that if we press Command on our keyboard, um, it allows us to go back in time and select another option here. So I'm going to select this inner edge here. And it also adds the fillet or that feature to that design there. So instead of having to go back and delete that fillet, we can actually just press Command on our keyboard and then just add that, add that edge there to our feature settings. After that, press OK. And now you have a fillet on the outside of the design and as well as the inside of it. And the whole purpose of this, at least in my opinion for me, is that so when we take a section analysis look, we actually have some thickness here uh, rather than just having, for example, if we were to just remove this really quick, don't copy what I'm doing. If we were to just remove this and we take a section analysis, you can see that this edge it's basically quite thin and could lead to issues during the 3D printing process. And in terms of weight, it may not hold for a long period of time. So that's just my whole point here. So uh, realistically, we would want to have a fillet on the inside as it also just makes more sense. And it adds a little bit of thickness to this fillet here as well. So once we have that set up and done, let's go ahead and home this. We're pretty much done with the entirety of our holder itself. The next thing we could do the next thing we need to do is to add some sort of joint or moving mechanism. That way we can kind of see what it's going to look like. So let's type in S on our keyboard, type in as built joint, select this inner body here, select this outer body here, go to type, search up slider, and then we're going to look for the spot where you have this little arrow pointing outwards. Okay. So I'm going to select that there. And now Fusion 360 will automatically play an animation here. 
um, kind of showing or indicating exactly what our motion looks like here. So if we were to pull this forward, you can kind of see that this is the moving or stopping. This this motion is basically how this uh, component is going to work here. So let's press escape there as we want to have this uh, within the box itself, within the enclosure. From here, what I'm going to do now is add some sort of handle since obviously we need a handle to actually pull this thing out if we're going to have this on our desk. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off holder, reorient our plane to the very top view, and I'm going to go ahead and toggle back on our drawer, so our drawer component. That way we have those features within this component here. Select Create Sketch. Select this top face here. Go to two point rectangle. Just select any edge here, doesn't matter. Just drag this all the way out. Doesn't matter how far as we'll actually set up some constraints. So press D on your keyboard, select this line there, select that line and let's set this to let's just say 20 millimeters. Let's repeat the exact same process to the other side. So now we've completed that process, let's go ahead and set some distance for the handle itself. So this would be, let's just say 7.5 millimeters, and then press OK. Now you should have a sketch on your drawer itself. The next thing we need to do here is to extrude this. Let's extrude this by 5 millimeters, press OK. From here we can probably, from here we can add a chamfer to our design. So let's select this edge here. And then let's select this inner edge inside. So make sure you're selecting the right edge. So we're selecting this outside edge here and this inside edge here. So let's add a chamfer. Let's just say 3.5, 3.75. And what I'm trying to do here is trying to match these two. That way they kind of blend together as if they're one whole piece. So after you have that, press OK. And now you have the holder. You have the holder itself, which is this outside piece, and you have this sliding door or the sliding effect on our component. One additional thing I might do here is also add some sort of hole in the back. This is just so, let's just say you're charging your phone and you want to charge it. Um, we can add some sort of hole here so our cable can kind of fit through. So I'm going to just create a quick sketch, select center, diameter, circle, just drag this out. And let's just drag this out to, let's just say 30 millimeters. Press E on our keyboard, select that sketch there, drag this around, distance to object, that side there, and press OK. Now I did go a little bit fast with that, but just keep in mind this is a feature that's optional in my opinion. If you want to add that, it's very simple to do so. You're basically just creating a circle and then extruding it to the other side. And this is our entirety of this design. We're pretty much done with this. We could also possibly add maybe some more features to this if we wanted to. So let's just say we want to add a fillet. Maybe just add one there. Make it look a little cooler. And uh, let's see. And that looks pretty cool to me. So that's our design for our under desk drawer. If we wanted to, we can also add some sort of uh, wood effect or some sort of wood design to this. So to go to oak, I'm going to add oak to this. Go to render, and then from here, just put in canvas render and just render that, and there you go. Here we have our final design completely rendered out. You can add whatever appearance you want for this design as well, and if you even wanted to go the extra mile, you could probably add some more features and some more um, things to make this a little bit more unique to whatever you're looking to make off of your design. So with that said, this is the entirety of our design. It's a quick, simple, and easy tutorial. Go ahead and send this off to your slicer and let me know your guys' thoughts. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. This is the final 3D printed design for our under desk drawer. You'll also need to add some sort of adhesive. Um, to possibly the four corners or maybe a strip all the way across. That way you can have it kind of adhere to the bottom of your desk. Of course, we could possibly create a design where this kind of mounts to the desk without needing adhesive. But honestly, this is probably the easiest and fastest way to do it without having to use any more additional work. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, make sure to drop it down in the comments below. Additionally, if you want to get the full resource guide for this tutorial with step-by-step -step instructions to make it easier for you, or maybe you missed a step, or maybe I missed a step, there'll be a link down below. That way you guys can take a look and get that full guide. 
Additionally, if you want to support my work and want to see more content like this, you can also check out my files and my programs down below in the description as it helps me out a lot. And my goal is to create more content and more guides just like this. That way I can help you guys become better designers and overall create better projects for 3D printing. So with that said, this is Brandon signing out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.